Hi everyone, I'm Judith. Welcome to Derwen's Art of Wellness Paint Along session today. We're going to be painting spring pansies in ink tents. Or if you haven't got an ink tents, you can use watercolour. Last week I popped the materials list in the file section. So hopefully you will have had time to get out your watercolour and ink tents pan sets or your ink tents pencils. You will have had chance to draw your outline onto your watercolour paper. Now, I'm not going to get a chance to respond to your comments because I'm not going to be able to see your, my screen because I've got a tripod and it's going to be overlooking the artwork. But I do have one of my colleagues and he's going to respond to your comments. So if you do get any problems, he will kindly help you but I will go into the comments afterwards and give you a helping hand. So don't feel as though you're going to get lost. It's going to be an ongoing project and I promise you I will give you one-on-one -on -one support wherever you need it. So, and as soon as the live is finished, I will also upload the video so you can watch it again at your own speed. So don't feel as though it's not suitable for all levels. It is. I'm also going to create an album for you at the end of the broadcast and you'll be able to put up your all your works of art we'll be able to share them and see what everybody's done today so if everything's ready and you've got it all out so you need your watercolor paper with your line drawing on it already in pencil your watercolor paint or your ink tents a little pot of water only if you're using normal brushes your water brushes I have to have kitchen roll or a serviette because I do clean my brushes off on it. Because in the ink tent sets you get a sponge, but I tend to get mine quite mucky after a while, I'm a bit heavy handed. Your swatches, if you had a chance to make one great, if you didn't then normally in your kits. And a piece of scrap paper is always a good idea as well. Now I'm going to rotate the camera. So for a split second, you're going to lose me and then it's going to be facing the artwork. Okay, so this is the artwork that we're going to be creating today. And the first one we're going to do is this purple one here. Now, my favorite pan set out of the ink tents is pan set two, because it's got this lovely pink in and it's got a nice purple and a nice blue. Now with watercolor and ink tents, you'll see that we, not get to, we want to keep nice crisp edges with petals. These are called hard lines and hard edges. Okay. So you've got your pencil outline on your watercolour paper. You don't want to have it too dark. If it's too dark, your best thing to do is get a kneadable eraser or some blue tack and just dab it over and take off any excess graphite. If you have excess graphite on watercolour painting or ink tents painting, what it does is it muddies your watercolour and it can make it look dirty. So take off any extra just by dabbing it over and it will just remove it. Okay, so this first one here that we've got is a nice light lilac. Okay, so if we look at the back petals that we're going to do first, it's a nice light lilac wash.
Okay, so squeeze a little bit of water into your palette. Okay, so not too much, or if you're using a paintbrush, take your paintbrush, dip it into the water, and just put some into your palette. Okay. Take a little bit of pale blue. I quite like this little pale, bit of pale blue here. So you're making up a very light wash. Now you'll see I still wash off my water brush. Now the pansy is lilac, so I'm going to add in a little bit of pink to it. And then test it on a scrap of paper. Perfect. Now one thing with watercolour is to get a nice even wash, wet your paper first. One way to stop getting streaky washes is wet the whole area first. So wet the whole area where your back petal is. Okay, so just this back petal. It's almost a V shape. Pick up a little bit of your lilac wash and just drop it in to your wet area. And what you've got to remember is anything water-based is going to dry two shades lighter. It never dries the colour you're painting, which can be quite disappointing if you think you've painted a really nice bright picture and then when it dries, it's suddenly really pale and insipid. It can really discourage you. And that all it is, is it's because it's water-based. So we're going to increase the colour a bit. So we're going to increase the depth in your wash a bit by adding a little bit of pink. So if you're using watercolour, you could add a little bit of opera rose. Or if you're using ink tents, a little bit of fuchsia. And just drop some pink into the gap, into the V-shape here. When this is dry, we'll increase these colours even more. Add some blue to your mix to make it a bit more purple. I'm just in that V. Now everything goes from this, if this is the centre of a clock, so think of a flower as the centre of a clock and everything goes out from the centre. Okay, and we want this bit to dry. Right at the beginning, if you remember, I said to you that we want hard edges. Sometimes with watercolour you want to avoid hard edges, but when you're doing botanicals and when you're doing flowers, you want the petals to have hard edges. We want to use this technique because we want the, the petals to overlay each other. So we're going to leave that dry now and we're going to go onto this area here where there's pale lemon underneath. Okay, so let me bring the original back to show you. Okay, so this is where you can clean your brush off. If you've got a water brush, there's two things you can do. Take your cloth, slightly squeeze it and just rub your bristles up and down or use the sponge in your palette to clean it. 
Don't ever do what I did. When I first got my Inktense palette, I threw my sponge away because I didn't realise what it was. I thought it was a space filler. Don't ever do that, honestly. Just clean it up and down. And that lovely sponge in here grabs the pigment off the bristles. You will always get some staining. It's because there's so much pigment in Inktense. It's a fantastic product. It does stain the bristles. Now, if we're going to do the lemon next here. Okay. So we're going to make up a, a nice pale yellow here for it. So squeeze a little bit of water into your palette and we're going to take some of the yellow. Now the yellow in ink tense is quite strong so you're not going to need to use much at all. So do the same if you're using watercolour and again we're going to wet the area You need to wet. If your water brush goes dry, just give it a bit of a squeeze. You're going to wet from the centre, not this bit in the middle. So not this circle. A good inch out, not right to the edges though. Centimetre away from the outer edge. When I drop the yellow on, you'll see exactly where. And again, like a clock face. So every, all the paint strokes go from the outside, inside out. Okay, then I'm going to pick up some of the yellow. And into that, just drop it in. Now it might look a little bit bright right now. However, remember it's going to go two shades lighter. So when it dries, it's going to be a lemon yellow. We don't hard blunt edges around here when I say that. You don't want it, so you wouldn't want to paint it so it's got a rim. Let me pick up some bright colour and show you. You wouldn't want to paint it so it had an edge like that. If it had an edge like this, it would look false. So instead, you want to paint it and flick your brush outwards. So it has a nice natural edge. Okay, so hopefully everybody's okay. And again, give your brush a clean off. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, a little cough. Okay, going back to your lilac, dilute your lilac mix a bit. It would have evaporated a little. Just test it on a piece of scrap paper, but it's still the colour you like. Make sure you have enough of it. With watercolour, if you're doing an area or a wash,
wash, what you must do is always make extra. If you've ever heard of cauliflowers or when you're doing a wash and you get marks where you're, it goes uneven and you get funny little kind of cauliflower marks, like cauliflower florets. What that is, is when your wash goes different strengths. Doesn't happen in ink tents. Ink tents is far easier to use, but it does happen in watercolour. One way you can avoid it is make extra than you need. Don't, don't dip your brush in water. You will notice that I don't have to do that with water, with water brushes. So it doesn't happen with ink tents, but with watercolour, don't keep dipping your brush in water. Then you're not strength, changing the strength of your watercolour wash. So you're going to avoid cauliflowers. Always mix more water, always mix more of the colour than you think you're going to need because you'll never get the same colour again. Okay, so now let's go around the outer edge with our watercolour mix. And blend in and flick in to the yellow. And you'll see because we dampened it before, we're getting a nice soft blend. Always going into it, never across it, always going in. Paint your edge first, and from your edge, go inwards. <coughs> Excuse me, a real tickle. I do find, after a while, I do tend to lose my voice. If you're using watercolour, don't use lots of water. You're better off using a damp brush than a wet brush. If you have a wet brush, you'll end up with mud and your watercolour goes a muddy colour. You don't tend to get that with ink tents, so it won't be so much of a worry for ink tents users. You get it with watercolour. Okay, so flick back in. And here's where we want to get a hard line. So hopefully if we've got it the right timing, you'll now see this hard edge appear. Where the two colours join. Checking my head's not popping in the screen. Okay, so that's a nice hard edge we're getting here. It's perfect. It has dried over here, which is fine. You can do something with that. So here, where I've got this, it's not blended great. That's because it, the paper's dried. That's okay. So we can we can do something with this. And it shows you that you know not, not everything goes always hundred percent the plan. Okay, so we've got our main colours on and now we're gonna start building up the depth around the outside because it's darker on the outside than it is the inside. So we're going to start putting on another layer around the outside. 
Then go back and just soften it where it joins. Okay, so I'll show you again. Put another layer on the outside, around the outside, here, around the edge. You can see a join. So then go stroke back over the join and free it to make it natural. Go around the edge. Then just soften the edge, flick it in. The difference with ink tents and watercolour is ink tents is what it says on the tin. It is ink. It's permanent when dry. You can layer it and layer it and layer it. You can use it on paper, fabric, any porous surface. Watercolour is a different product. Um, it is watercolour and you can lift it, you can wash it out. Slightly trickier to use actually and you can't use it on fabric. Okay so here it needs to dry a bit but we can just blend that bit out where it's bled slightly. Okay now whilst that's drying I just want to show you, it's got a darker centre. So we just want to get a bright yellow section in here. Now this isn't wash, this is going to be using wet on dry. Now what wet on dry is, I want you, this is one of my favourite words, I want you to smush your paintbrush into your palette and pick up a real thick layer of paint on your brush. Okay? And I just want you to drop it into here. Then just before you get to that outer rim, just lift off. Clean off your brush. And then just smooth it out all the way to the outside. The reason why I did that is to give it a nice, almost softer edge so it doesn't become childlike. And then you can flick it out to make it natural. Just let that dry. And then in this section here, we have a tiny little triangle. We're going to do the same with a bit of green. So smush your paintbrush into green, a real thick layer of watercolour. And just paint the middle section green. And clean your brush off. So as you can see, this is why I use a piece of kitchen roll, because I do just run my brush over and over and over it. Okay. So I meant to now, we need to darken up around this outside. The wet feel has gone off the paper. It's just damp. So we need to pick up, make sure your brush is clean. We need to pick up some of this purple, but we need to... A thicker mix of it. Test it on a piece of paper. Right. Why do we need a thicker mix? Because it's going to dry lighter. Okay, so I want to make sure it's dark enough. I want to just go around the outside, darken up the areas to give it more tonal value. If you haven't got dark areas, you haven't got light areas. You want a good variety. And then just soften it 
back up. create some texture. Now I'm hoping all our pansies come out different. We don't want them all looking the same. There's a little bit of the petals here where they overlap. So we can create some textures in. And where before that yellow here looked really, really bright, you can see now it's a lovely pale lemon. And what's nice about this being an ink tense is when it's dry, it's permanent, so I can just go over it and over it and it won't shift. If you're doing watercolour, if you've gone wrong or if you want to lighten it, you can lift it out. You can't do that with ink tense, but you can layer it with ink tense. Okay, so I think I'm going to get some a fuchsia again, or if you're using watercolour, a bit of aqua pink. And just drop some in this V-shape here at the back. And just soften it. Now the centre of the pansy has a darker purple colour to it, so we're going to put that in. Now if it does that and it leaves, it's not a major issue, you blot it, all it means is it wasn't ready. Okay, so we're going to give it a second to dry off. I used too much water. So as you can see, it does happen, and all you have to do is just blot it. Okay, and try maybe a different area. So you can see it does happen to, and just flick out. It does happen to everybody. So this the first petal, Take it from the centre and just flick out. I'm going to do the same with this one on this side. Take it from this side. Now you can make a nice Easter card whilst you're at home. Should be nice. You can turn it into a cross stitch. Do all sorts with these. Okay, so that split second of allowing it to dry has just stopped that bleed. And then just build up the colour, again working from the centre outwards. Don't turn it into a circle. A 
The circle won't look real. You want it to almost be like a trefoil, like a clover. This pansy is the one that takes the longest. Okay. Okay, so whilst that's drying, because if you work on it too long before it's dry, the colour will start to lift off, especially if you're doing it in watercolour. So I just want to give it a moment to dry. And whilst that's drying, I'm just going to move it to the side and I'm just going to show you let me move this one here because this pansy this one this yellow one hardly takes any time at all okay so this one here squeeze your water brush into your palette and mix a pale lemon wash don't forget this tutorial this video will be uploaded after the live session as a video so you'll be able to pause it and watch it back in your own time okay leave that yellow in your palette and what i want you to do is on these bottom three petals just put a wash of yellow of water sorry now don't worry if you've got a tinge of yellow on your brush that's fine it helps you see where it's gone that's absolutely fine Now the paper I'm using today is the new Intense paper from Derwent and I have to say it's turned into my favourite paper. As you can see it really suits the, the ink tints. Okay, so those three petals are wet. Now I started on this one on the left, so I'm going to go back to that one first. Pick up some of your yellow and just drop it in. And just move it round on the petal. Now you don't want it to be completely even. So don't overwork it. You want it to look as though it's got some texture and folds to it and then do the same with the second petal because this was the second one you painted okay so pop some lemon onto it so leave some spaces these are negative spaces spaces where you've left the color of the paper or your wash to show through and then your third petal. Okay. So whilst they're wet, pick up some of the yellow you used to make your wash and just paint it into the centre and where the petals overlapped. Get some of the wash and just smooth it on. So you're using it to blend. Wash water and wash colours are great to smush things together. Okay. Now whilst that's drying. I want to move back to our purple pansy because we need a crisp line here. So we can't put our two purple petals on 
whilst the yellow is dry, dry, still wet, sorry, and drying because it will bleed. So we need to move back to our purple pansy. Now our purple pansy needs to be darker here. So we're going to pick up our purple and just increase it. So you're building up the tonal depth here. Break it outwards. So you can see the intents built up in layers. Now if you're using pencils, it's the same thing. You can layer it and layer it and layer it. And you'll be surprised how many layers your paper can take. Just flip it outwards. Okay. You can't really overwork ink tints. Now let's mix up a really super thick mix of purple. There we go. And we're going to paint on the lovely striations and details from the centre of the pansy. Use the tip of the brush. And then when it's dry, we can put more details in. But right now you just want to very carefully, just with the very tip, just pull out this inner purple. And flick it out. And I'll turn my hand so you don't have to be covered. But try not to twist your hand too much to avoid things like RSI or any kind of arthritic movement because it can hurt. I'm used to doing it. Okay, and just make some flicker, flicks. Perfect. Okay, so that needs to dry. It really does need to dry. And this yellow inside is looking a little bit flat. So let's pick up some orange. Again, we're going to pick up a really thick mix of it. And just in the centre, put a little blob, a little dot of it, clean your brush off. And then just blend it and soften the edge. Be careful don't to take it near the purple because it will bleed into each other and become a bit muddy. This needs to dry, okay, before we put the last purple lines over the top of this centre. That needs to dry. So I'm going to take you over to this pansy on the left again. Let me centre it here. Okay, so this is a, a fuchsia and a plum mix. Okay, so I'm going to pick a mix of fuchsia here. So squeeze your water brush. We're going to take a fuchsia if you're on ink tense, if you're on watercolour, a fuchsia magenta or an opera rose. It needs to be quite a thick mix because it does fade on drying. And then take a plum. Okay. Clean your brush off. Now again, Going to go around the outside. Now this is where I'm going to teach you to do wet into wet for details. I'm going to start on the left petal 
fuchsia around the outside. Taking it down towards the centre. I want you to leave a slight gap between this left petal and the right petal. Pick up the plum colour, so I didn't wash my brush off, but it starts to blend it in. If I'd washed my brush off, I would have diluted the mix too much. I want you to take neat plum onto your brush. I want you to paint it in to the mix. And when it starts to dry, it will soften and disappear. Now I want you to do the same with this petal on the right. Fuchsia on the top of it. Paint towards the centre of the flower. So you can see this edge is starting to soften now. Then into plum, leave the drawing in between. Paint from the centre to the outside. Okay, so now pick up neat plum on your brush and flick from the middle to the outside. So you're painting wet into the wet mix. And as it dries, it will disperse gently. Okay. Now this centre of this flower is a lime yellow mix. So with our yellow you used before, to save wasting paint I'm just going to add some green into it. a little bit. Put some green into the middle and leave that needs to dry. Now you can see how much paler this has gone here. Now to me it's a little too pale so I am going to pick up a little bit more yellow and just add some yellow details. For me, it's too pale. You might like it pale. Just for me, it's just a little bit too pale. And then just soften any edges on the petals. With water brushes, with these ones in particular, you don't need to squeeze them to get the water out as you're working. There's a valve inside that does it for you. Only if you're doing large washes do you need to do that. Okay, so we can now go back to this one. What you can do is just with the knuckle, just test the back of it and just see if it's dry enough paint on top. If it's really wet, if it comes off on the back of your hand, it's too wet. Now, it's not coming off, the paint's not on the back of my hand, so I should be able to pick it up and paint a line on top. Let's see. Yes, I can. Okay, so I'm happy enough that I can paint these lines 
one top. If paint had come away on the back of my knuckle, then it was too wet to paint on top of. Okay, so I'm just going to put some of these lines in darker. Just on top. And just drop it in on top. Now if you're using watercolour you may want to leave it a couple of seconds longer. If the paint starts to lift off your paper with watercolour you may need to lift it, leave it a second longer. It's called lifting out. So you're just increasing the depth of purple, just adding in some lines. I think I'll increase depth here, just over the shadows. Okay, so while that dries, we're going to go back to here. Pick up your plum, really, really thick mix. I just want to paint details, the lines on this pansy. Now your pink pansy would be exactly the same. Now we've run out of time in today's lesson to do your pink pansy. I'm just going to put a little bit of, a couple of details on this section here with a couple of little lines. Now we've run out of time to do your pink pansy today, but if you want to have a go at it, or if you want to contact me and I will talk you through it, then please do. I would love to see your finished artwork, so I'm going to put you a folder within the albums and I will put a link up on to the Facebook page for you for your albums. If you get stuck at all and I will read through the comments to see if there's anything you need, do just please do ask. The group's fantastic. You're so helpful, you're so encouraging. I think it's great. If there's anything else you want to also learn, please do ask. Or if there's anything you want to cover. Until then, happy painting and I hope you enjoy your pansies. Take care.